Hey, student, I got a great question here about number 33, and uh, let's just read it here it, uh, from chapter 26. It says, show that the energy associated with a conducting sphere of radius capital R and charge total Q uh, surrounded by a vacuum has this much energy. Okay. And in that case, we don't really have a formula that we can kind of just say, hey, Let's go look this up. Let's plug and chug. But what we need to do is kind of think about this whole idea of, of energy. And I guess I'm going to start this way. You know, if I have some, you know, I'll call it some point that has some final potential and some other point that has some initial potential. And then there is some little charge. Let me call it DQ. And we move that from the initial to the final. How much energy would that, would that take? And we learned this formula. Uh, we learned that the definition of the change in potential is equal to the change in potential energy divided by that charge. Or for this case, it might be better to write it this way. The change in energy is equal to how much charge are you moving between these two potentials. So in, in my little model, I guess this Q would be my delta Q, small little charge, and my change in voltage would be final minus initial. And that would be the change in energy. Okay? So if I kind of play this little game where I say, okay, let's, let's answer this, this, this question. Uh, why don't we start with a sphere of radius capital R? And in terms of Q, maybe I'll make a little chart here, Q. Uh, we're going to start with a zero, and then we're going to put more and more and more and more charge on it until we get to capital Q. Now, the reason that's kind of important is the potential of where I'm putting it. Maybe I'll just put this equation from chapter 25, which says that if you have, let me not put a capital R, if you have some kind of charge and you're some distance away from its center, uh, that would be the potential. So, in this case, if I call this, you know, final potential and this initial potential, when I originally have, you know, zero charge on it, and I come way over here and I grab a little delta Q and I bring it on over, using this formula, because the Q on the charged sphere at the beginning is zero, you would have, you know, zero potential to begin with and zero potential when you end with. But then if you bring one little chunk of delta Q over, you'll, you'll have something that looks like this. The initial um, would be calculated with using a small amount of charge on here, delta Q, but you're really, really far away, so you still get a zero. You get you know, something over a big, big number. And then the final potential is you know, what you get when you place it right on that surface. So that would be K... And at this point, it would just be a, a single delta Q, and then it would be capital R. In other words, in general, the potential on this sphere would be KQ over capital R. And in general, the starting potential really far away would be zero, uh, no matter how much charge you put there because of that radius. So for... The initial potential, I would use an infinite radius. And for final potential, I would use the radius of the sphere. And then, of course, what would happen as I'm piling the charges on is my Q is increasing from zero to capital Q. Okay. So I'll keep that in mind as I use this equation. So in other words, this equation becomes something like this. The amount of energy... And so let's just say I'm, you know, bringing charges over. So I'm part way through the process. And I'm going to bring another small DQ over. I'd say, okay, is DQ 
and then it would be KQ over capital R minus zero. And so that would be my change in potential as I bring it over, and I'm bringing over a small amount of charge DQ. And so if I think about then taking this equation and adding it up, where I start with the charge of the sphere at zero and keep going, and so maybe I'll say Q starting at zero and going to capital Q, I could write it in a calculus form by saying... Let's think of this as a small amount of energy, du. And then I add it up, getting my total energy. So this would be the integral of, and so here's my dq, and then this would be kq over r. And that's probably the hard part of this problem is, is getting right here, getting to the point of saying, look, I'm going to assemble a bunch of, of charges. That's, you know, that's what it says. Show that the energy associated with a conductor sphere is. So you got to pile it on there. you got to go from no charge up to some charge. I, I think it, you can get careless here and do something like this. You could, you know, say, okay, well, what if I imagine coming way over here from infinity and I grab a charge of Q? I just grab it all at one time. And then I bring it over. Well, if you bring it over and there's no charge here, then it, 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 it takes no energy. And you're not really calculating how much energy did it take to assemble a charge of Q. You, you already have it assembled here. You're just saying, how much energy does it take for me to move an already assembled charge of Q and move it to a new location? And if there's no charge, you're going to say, well, the delta U would be, okay, how much are you moving Q and times your change in pot potential, you know, which would just be zero minus zero. And of course, you're going to say it takes no energy. And sure, sure. But you are, again, not really answering the question when you do that. You are not saying how much energy did it take to assemble the Q. You, you, you already have it assembled, and now you're shifting it over to another location. Now, I suppose another uh, easy mistake to make is to say, well, what if this already had a charge of Q on it? Oh, okay. So when you bring this over, you're now going to end up with a charge sphere of 2Q. And that's not really not what the problem says. And you're not even really figuring out what it took to assemble Q. Uh, you're, you're just piling on another Q, and the energy of assembling that you've avoided, and the, the energy of assembling this one you've also avoided, and now you're just putting how much energy does it take to bring this over, not, not really to assemble those two Qs. So... If you did that, you, you know, well, maybe I shouldn't even do what you, you might get. It would just be wrong. It wouldn't be the right number. Okay, so keeping that in mind, this is what they're asking us to do. But I can really see how you could actually do this math thinking that you are doing what they asked. And they're not. They're saying, you know, how much energy does it take to kind of assemble this all together? Show that the energy associated with the conducting sphere. So you, you, you put it all together from nothing. <clears throat> now, like I said, this is a very easy integral then to do because like all of our integrals you first want to pause and say do you have anything that doesn't change and of course these two factors don't change this is coulomb's constant this is the radius of the of the sphere and now you have this integral and then you have to step back and say okay now do i need to switch the variable to something like a dx or a dr like we did in a lot of our integrals and in this case no i mean this is a perfect integral to do uh, this would be just the integral would be q squared over 2. And then, of course, you can put our limit straight on here. We're going to start with zero charge on it and build up to capital Q. So this just becomes k q squared over 2r, which is what they asked us to show what the energy is equal to. All right. Hope that helped, too. Take care.